Hi, my name is Trey Mack. I'm back again. And today I'm going to be talking with Alice Pauley, a professor at Purdue University, who is an expert in the field of diversity in the classroom. And we will be talking about the dramatization that you just watched, uh, where the TA made a few blunders uh, that made the classroom feel less inclusive. And Alice is going to help us um, dissect the, the dramatization video and to figure out some things that the TA could have done better or differently um, in order to be more sensitive to diversity, to the diversity that was in his classroom. We're just gonna go ahead and start. I'm talking with Alice through Skype. Hi, Alice. Hi, Trey. Um, so let's just you know go ahead and jump right in. So how do you feel that the TA starts off? Is he kind of reasonably welcoming? Do you suspect that the students feel fairly comfortable with him at first? Oh, well, I think he does a good job welcoming the students in this classroom, having them sit down, um, introducing himself and saying what he uh, wants to be called and giving them freedom with regards to that. Um, plus the fact that he's a black man in a successful physics position, he's an instructor in this classroom, um, might activate what researchers at UMass Amherst call stereotype inoculation. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit, I think a little bit later about stereotype threat. Um, but the fact that he is a person of color in a position of power in the classroom automatically makes some um, connection with some of his students and uh, will m actually make things more easily read um, and welcoming for some of those students. Research has found that uh, having that underrepresented groups, when seeing someone from their group in a position of power, can inoculate those underrepresented folks from the sense that they don't belong in science or mathematics. So just his being there is a good thing for some of those students. And it doesn't, this is where people showing role models in positions of doing science or math um, can help students, particularly those who are underrepresented, overlook some of the other messages that our culture gives them that they don't belong in science or math. Well, was there anything in particular that, you know, maybe the TA could have done uh, to make the class feel even more welcome and establish a, a good rapport with the students? Sure. Some other things that he could have done um, included having the students introduce themselves at the beginning um, and maybe describing their major or their year in school, and that would allow him to avoid making the assumption later that they're all physics majors, uh, which was a mistake. Um, that would also help them build community amongst themselves, right? They're more likely to be able to go talk to someone that they've introduced themselves to. Um, plus, it brings everyone's voice into the room. Um, Peggy McIntosh, who writes about whiteness and white privilege, she talks about this as the, quote, autocratic administration of time in service of the democratic distribution of time. And I, I really <laughs> like that idea. Making sure that everyone has voice in the classroom and has been heard at least once, even just through introducing themselves, makes them more likely to be able to ask questions later on. So that's something that he could have done too, is some introductions. I never would have thought that just, you know, having the students introduce themselves, aside from, you know, giving the professor a chance to learn their names and, you know, get familiar with the students and them to get familiar with each other, that also just having that, at least that one moment where they're allowed to, you know, each speak up could make it, you know, more likely that they're willing to, you know, answer questions or ask questions later in the class. Right, right. No, it's, it's a small thing. It takes almost no time and it makes a big difference. Great.